Welcome riding buddies. This week from a video, I want to have a look at some forgotten suspension technology that has been developed over the years. For many years, there's been a lot of aftermarket companies coming up with some great ideas with suspension that never really took off. I'm just going to have a look at a couple of those technologies. The year is 1974. You've gone and purchased yourself one of those flash fang dangle new Honda CR125Ms. You've got four inches of rear travel suspension. Hmm, that ain't enough. You see an ad in your favourite magazine that you can increase the rear suspension travel of your little Elsnore out to seven inches of rear suspension travel. Hmm, this sounds really good. Skunk Works Engineering were really, at the time, cutting edge with suspension technology, bringing us a linkage style modification that you could fit to the back of pretty much any twin shock motorbike of the era. Mainly the reason it's still not around is because it made itself obsolete. Of course, modern bikes ended up going to linkage rear suspension the factories all came up with their own ideas of how to get long travel suspension, mainly kicking off with the Makos of the middle of 1974s. But the Skunk Works technology, I feel, was just absolutely awesome for that time. This time, we go from the back of the bike to the front of the bike and look at the great invention by Valentino Ribby. He got rid of the telescopic forks and used a linkage front end system. It's not your normal leading link front suspension that was on your 1965 cotton or something like that. This was much more special than what that system was. It was so awesome in its performance that even the great man himself, Roger De Costa, got on board with Valentino to develop the system. In 1979, Roger De Costa used it on his work Suzuki in the 500 World Championships. When Roger De Costa went from Suzuki to Honda, he convinced Honda to buy the Ribby system. Unlike the Skunk Works rear suspension technology, the Ribby system is not about suspension travel. It's about bike geometry and maintaining a constant geometry through the bike. Honda did do further development on the Ribby suspension system. They went from chrome molly to billet alloy. They even trialled a single shocked system as well. But how cool would this bike be? You've got a twin cylinder 125 with a Ribby front end on it as well, just for good measure. But Honda just found that it was just too complex and too expensive to manufacture. So they never actually put it in to the production line. But there were quite a few works bikes out there that did end up using the Ribby system. We head back to the rear of the bike once again. The Boyson Link. Yes, the Boyson Link was bought to you by the man who bought you Boyson Reeds. The Boyson Link, as far as I'm concerned, is probably one of the greatest rear suspension systems ever made. It was a floating swing arm. It maintained a constant chain tension. It improved rear grip on the rear tyre. It did so many changes to the chassis, it just was amazing. It was so good that Bob Hurricane Henna used it when he rode the 250 GP in America in 1986. He chose not to ride the factory Suzuki's, but this Suzuki fitted with the Boyson Link. It was groundbreaking technology, absolutely amazing technology, but was unsaleable to the main manufacturers. They all considered it just way too complex, which in a way it was, but it did work. That's just been a little bit of a look at some of the suspension technology over the years that I find really cool. Thank you for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. Make sure you go back through my library and check out some of my other stuff. There's a lot of other stuff in there that you may find interesting. And we'll catch you next time around.